uh, could you tell me a bit about uh, Becca Hesten? Because it's a, a pretty new project still. So how did it all get started? Well, that's a long story and that's a short story. <laughs> <laughs> so how much time do we got? No, actually, uh, it's it's a folk folk tale, old folk tale from southern Sweden of this horse, white horse, living in uh, waters, and it's really, really nasty, really nasty horse because it's. I don't know how much you know about the background, but it tricks women and children to ride on its back, and then it drags them down to the water and tear them. To apart and yeah, actually kill them underwater drown by drowning and tearing apart. And it's actually not a horse. It's more like uh, there's a Swedish uh, a figure called Necken. It's a naked guy playing violin in in, in the forest and uh, among uh, close to the water. And the Beckest is actually a the same creature, but in the form of a horse. So uh, I was taught about this creature by my parents. Uh, I don't think they believed in it, but, but they like to scare. I guess it's, it was a good thing to keep us children from the water. And um, when I started to talk with Victoria, uh, she, uh, Victoria, she is the singer. Uh, she told me exactly the same story that her father has been telling her, her about this story. And we were like, yeah, we started to read about it and she knew about, much about Becca Heston and I was totally fascinated about it. So we went deep into an old, um, uh, to, to these old stories about it and started to write music and lyrics uh, and found it really fascinating how this creature actually scared people and still it's a pretty local local creature uh, and that was about what could be now four years ago i think three or four years ago and um I started to create some, some tunes about it and she was writing the lyrics and we came together uh, with Per, Per Olund, and um, there was magic, <laughs> really. I mean, it felt like uh, this project was total when, when we th three people met, we, we had the whole concept. It was totally clear, and since then it's just been we've been producing a, a lot of material, and uh, we ran into Psychic Records, and they really liked the whole idea. And yeah, here we are now. <laughs> okay, and how did you kind of uh, found the style of music, or was it evident from the beginning, or how has it? find its way a, a lot of the inspiration is actually by walking around in the woods i take a lot of photos and i work as a photographer for, uh, for a living and i found the inspiration of the sound when i was walking around and i hear the noises in, in the forests and you know when you just standing, be, being lonely in the forest, you get all these impressions actually. And um, and then I have a background, I've been playing music for all my life. And somewhere in the 90s, I heard uh, Hedningarna, a Swedish punk folk band actually. And they inspired me with their raw sound. They are playing really fast and they are playing really, really nice. But uh, we want to try to experiment by turning the tempos down and doing really slow ambient music, but with the same kind of soundscapes. So I, I guess that, that's where, where it started. And 
after that it developed into different styles actually but it's still we got one feet in the uh, nordic folk uh, tradition uh, combined with electronic uh, and the electronic soundscapes and also a lot of field recordings oh, okay so uh, it was uh, clear for you from the beginning that you didn't want to take that more punk or metal way with this band no i mean it's it's always hard to put it in different boxes well this is metal this is punk because well personally I, i'm i'm really fond of uh, using a lot of distorted sounds and uh, stuff like that and uh, you will find it in forthcoming songs there will be more guitars and especially different kind of liars is it called like that i hope so <laughs> and uh, distorted cellos and stuff like that into the music and yeah, so that if you want to call it metal i'm not sure uh, in my opinion when you're playing metal you have a more like live drummer and uh, yeah those kind of sounds and i'm not sure we are not we are experimenting with that kind of sound because we have a lot of influences of course i've been listening to all kind of music as well and victoria as well so i think it's there will be so to say different arms of becca heston that will touch this kind of um, this kind of uh, music different music styles absolutely yeah actually uh, the debut album uh, vattenhall and strepare came out late last year and uh, the new song midwinter just a couple of weeks ago actually so everything is kind of uh, just in the beginning for you what can you tell me about these two recordings well um well, yeah, Vattenholm's Drepa is quite ambient. Uh, it was, I, I tried to do some kind of <laughs> do, doom ambient uh, soundscapes, uh, if you could call it like that. I mean, it, it would be this big, really big sounds, but still ambient, still, still very slowly. I mean, we are playing it down to 40 bpms or stuff like that, that that's pretty <laughs> well that's really slow and and um when, when it so, so so i think that the idea of uh Vatanales Drepa was actually about the becca heston is waking up from its big sleep it's coming back to us and it's like little you know the kind of twilight zone you're into when you're dreaming but you're slowly coming coming awake and uh, that, that's the mood of it when it comes to uh, midwinter it was more like the, the time at, at the uh, uh, 21st September, uh, december when when the our darkest day and longest night we were thinking of this um, creature king frost uh, in sweden it's it's the guy who actually rules over the frozen world and the thing when you freezing and you realize you're going to not die but you you can't move anymore you will be totally frozen until something else happen and that small moment when you realize and you become this frozen piece of when you stopped life without dying, that's midwinter. And that's when, you, when you're out in the night in really crystal clear winter night, that's, that's the impression you get, well, now everything stops and it won't wake up until uh, springtime actually, when the sun come, comes back. So it's a little more 
it's a really sad song in a way. <laughs> so it's uh, also a little easier than the other tracks. There is a difference. And uh, next uh, upcoming album will be more actual uh, regular songs, actually. Okay, yeah, these yeah these two recordings they came out in a kind of a brisk pace so uh how do you work on your music i mean the, how is the writing process and recording for becca heston yeah um well it's it, most often it starts out in the forest i think uh, with the impression uh, it could be by mostly by pictures and it, it called, could also be like uh, we are talking about one of these creatures we want to uh, make a song of. So we discuss a lot when, when we create these uh, songs, actually. And then I start to find out the um, soundscapes. And uh, we get to the studio, listen to it, start to write the uh, lyrics. And it's Victoria writing the lyrics. And we are discussing those parts of the lyrics and how for example how would it look like is there a creature well how how does it move how does it sound when it moves through the forest and in what way and in what shape and so on so it's pretty <laughs> it's proof um a lot of fantasy discussion actually and uh, then we start the recording and we're finding, I mean, the three of us, we have, we have, we, we find, we understand each other in a really good way. And Per has, uh, work, is working a lot with field recordings and we fit all this kind of, it's like you boiling something in a, in a big, big fryer actually. So, so we, we spend a lot of time in the studio, uh, both discussing and mostly like you know, working with the sounds and uh, soundscapes and songs. Yeah. Okay, and you already mentioned the next album and how that's gonna be a bit, bit more. Uh, maybe. Uh, well, you can you can tell me what kind of uh, direction you are taking with the next one. Yeah, I think it's getting darker. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what a surprise. And uh, it's more, it, I mean, it's written later. So we developed a lot of the sound, soundscapes and the way to produce it. And yeah, it's, it's a bit different. You still will recognize that this is a Backgaston album, absolutely. But it has a little different style, absolutely. Most there are more more guitars on it, <laughs> and uh, more acoustic sounds as well. Uh, we are using Fagelharpa. We are using uh, bass guitars and uh, I think cellos as well, and uh, natural drums and a lot of noise making instruments and non instruments to it so it will be a little bit more raw in, in its sound okay it sounds like there's already quite much thought put in to the upcoming album so is there some themes already you know that you will be uh, studying in that that recording uh, actually, it, it is already recorded. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm actually right now looking at the uh, at the album. <laughs> I got the, I got it physically here, so it's it's produced. It's uh, the, uh, the uh, vinyl and CDs. Yeah, we we got them. So it's it's gonna be a release pretty soon, I think. Okay, so what what are the teams for for that? Tudor is uh, is the word of uh, pre uh, prediction. When when you see small signs uh, that makes you, you you can tell the future. 
So in this album, the Becca Heston is up and uh, alive. It's awake, so to say, and it's about small stories. So uh, you will you're gonna hear stories about when it's yeah confronting p- uh, humans actually, and uh, it, it, it's a lot of from the view of the Becca Hest. Uh, the, the the view from the creature actually. So yeah, <laughs> you 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 will get an album full of small stories. 